All right, guys, Ivan here. And yesterday I posted a video. It was Rowley versus Phil comparison 2018 Mr. Olympia. And one of my viewers left this comment. So he said that uh, Phil Heat in front double bicep pose looked like he has a pack tear on his right pack. And I never thought about this. I never really paid attention to it. But when I looked at it, I saw something was definitely weird, and I never heard anybody talking about it, but it does a little, a little bit off. So I did some research, and I went back to 2005, actually. So here you can see Phil Heath from 2005. He was a junior competitor. I'm not sure exactly which competition this was. Maybe it says on the photo. Read it if it says. Anyways, you can see his chest here, and it looks normal. I don't see anything weird here. So I went back from 2018, I checked every single year, and every single year it looked a little bit odd. 2005 it looked normal. So I checked 2005 and then I checked 2006. And here you can see it. So you can see his right pack here. It looks asymmetrical. It doesn't look the same as his left pack. And looks different from 2005. So it's possible in 2006 or 2005, he had a pack tear. And this is, uh, as you can see, this is from 2005. So, nothing there. And now you can again see 2006. Maybe just the way he poses now, a little bit different. Maybe it's just a symmetrical chest. But I think it could be a pack tear. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Kevin Leveroni also had a pack tear in 1992. This was him in 1992. He looked normal. He looked fresh, very, very good. He was driven like crazy. And he placed second at his first Mr. Olympia. He won the Knight of Champions, his pro debut. And then a little bit later, after 1992 Mr. Olympia, he actually had a pack tear. And later, it was very, very visible. After that pack tear, he never really went 100% at bodybuilding. But anyways, you can see the pack tear. You can see it. It's pretty obvious. It is there. So this is how pack tear looks like. But also, you had men's physique champion Jeremy Buendia having a pack tear in 2017, so in 2018 he lost his Mr. Olympia title and he actually placed fourth. But I don't think that pack tear had much to do with it, he was just watery, he probably overcarbed or something like that, he just looked worse, much worse as far as conditioning, not so much about his chest. His chest wasn't really that obvious, but yeah, you can see it. One of the most obvious and the most famous pack tears in the world is one of Sylvester Stallone. Thankfully, Sylvester wasn't a bodybuilder, he was just an actor, so it didn't really matter that much. But it is very obvious, very, very obvious. And there is another also very, very famous pack tear, and that is Scott Mendelssohn, the powerlifter. This is very popular photo because almost half of his torso is blue. And this is probably a photo after a couple of days from his pack there, so you can't really see any difference. And he is not lean, so you can't really see the details. But I wanted to mention this photo because somebody in the comments would tell me, why didn't you mention Scott Pendleson? Well, there you go, here he is. So now that you know how a pack tear looks like, tell me, is this a pack tear? Honestly, I'm not sure if this is just genetically asymmetrical chest. Or is it really a pack tear? Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section below. But I think it could be. It very well could be. And you guys know Phil. He is not one of the people with thick skin. Literally, physically and metaphorically. His skin is very thin. That's why he can get so shredded. And his skin is not thick in terms of being able to accept criticism easily and not be offended by it. He reacts to people's comments very, very strongly and he does not like criticism of any kind. In 2016, when Louis Marco made all these videos about his bubble gut, quote-unquote, he actually showed fingers to his stomach the moment when he stepped on the stage. And once he won the title, he made a video, he made a selfie video for his Instagram story talking directly to Louis Marco. So let me roll that clip for you guys, let me remind you. All you dumbass Louis Marco fans, you dummies, you dummies. <laughs> it is, man. On the chance page, running it now. Hey, Louis, get on my fucking live. Get on my live, boy. And show some damn respect. If you don't, if you don't, you a punk. Get his ass on here. If you don't show some love and some, some respect, 
anything. You don't deserve to mention my name no more. So I thought we got to get some shots for real. I don't want to get around. You need to you need to check yourself. You need to have some humble pie. You rang your mouth. You said you guys had 60 more pounds. And you shredded the motherfucker, and I still won. Give me my props, fool. And if all your fans keep coming on here, I'm gonna block the shit out of them tomorrow. That's word. Oh, you hate Louis. Oh, you sucker. <laughs> You still sad. You all burned. You melted down. You made all them damn posts. You made all them posts. Oh, you know you love me, boy. You know you love me. Oh, man. So basically, as you can see, Phil was obsessed by it. Phil was obsessed by Louis Marcos' critics. And then he replies to him as soon as he wins the Mr. Olympia, guys. And the Mr. Olympia talking to a YouTuber, to a vlogger, who is trolling him, literally singing songs about his stomach. That was just not something that Phil should have done, but it just goes to show what kind of person Phil is. I'm pretty sure that Dorian wouldn't care if he had a hater. I'm pretty sure that Jay Cutler wouldn't respond to that kind of comments. But then again, all that drama made bodybuilding fun. Back then, when Louis Marco was commentating on videos, when Kai was there, when you had Phil versus Kai, the biggest rivalry ever, it wasn't Ronnie versus Jay, they liked each other pretty much. It wasn't uh, Arnold versus Luthering, no, no. It was Phil versus Kai. These guys almost had a fist fight on the stage. It was unprofessional on one hand, but it was very interesting. And that's all that matters. This is entertainment. This is sport, sure, but it's also entertainment. It's not just a sport. It's both. It's a combination of both. You gotta admit that. Anyways, Phil is that kind of person. He responds to everybody. He's really, really affected by haters. So if he had a pack there in the meantime, he wouldn't talk about it because it would hurt him. It would hurt him mentally and then therefore in terms of placings. And then when I was finished with my Google search, I searched the same thing on YouTube and I found another video. This is interview with muscular development where Phil basically says that he had a small pack there. He wasn't sure if it was a pack tear or not, but he did feel like it, although there was no swelling and so on. And this happened in 2009. So let's take a look at this interview as well. Injured. I had injuries. People don't know. Like, I, I personally tore my pec in 2009. Oh, wow. Didn't, during the Olympia prep. For eight weeks, I didn't have movement. I, I was doing 50-pound dumbbells for chest. I mean, no one knew. So how did you um, tear it? How did you tear it? I never heard about this. I felt some weird tingling in my hands, hmm. in this hand, and then I remember going back to Denver, and Dylan Armbrust was spotting me doing four plates on on incline, and on that third rep, I I had him grab it, I wrapped it, and it felt like paper tearing, hmm. and it sat. That's what it sounded like, yep. and I'm like, fuck, and I was like, so it didn't turn black and blue. It didn't pull from the rib cage or anything like that. It didn't require surgery or even MRI. It was just one of those things that it was a micro tear. And I and I thought to myself, I could have ended my fucking career doing that. Yeah. I should just train with 315 and let it be. So that's what I did for a long time. And then when I started... Doing so basically he just said that he had a partial tear in 2009. So maybe this is actually what we see today. But we saw the same thing in 2006. So I'm pretty sure that he had a serious tear in 2005-2006 and he decided never to speak about it publicly. So maybe it's not the case, maybe it is, I'm not sure about this. You guys can let me know in the comment section below what is your take, what is your opinion based on all this that I presented here and based on all these photos you can check. So make sure to let me know what you think about it and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to my channel. All the best guys, bye bye.